When trying to decide exactly which characters would make the cut to be included in the much-awaited first-ever live-action Transformers movie, I'm pretty sure the writers had it easy. I mean, we're talking about, at this point, a classic franchise with almost two decades' worth of history. And more importantly, a universe populated with hundreds of characters, chock full of rich backgrounds and personalities. With such a treasure trove of resources at their disposal, I'm sure that the last thing we thought they'd do is just discard almost everything and just make up brand new characters on the spot. But we knew they'd never do that, right? Right? Way back in 2003, Transformer fans all around the world rejoiced when news broke that a live-action movie was greenlit for release in 2007. While it was still four years away, that didn't stop excited fans from scouring the internet for any juicy piece of information about the movie and speculating on what the actual finished product would be like. And most importantly, of course, with hundreds of characters already existing in the franchise, everyone wanted to know exactly which one of their favorite robots in disguise would ultimately make the leap into the big screen. From the start, everyone knew that the major names like Optimus Prime, Megatron, Starscream, and Bumblebee would be included in the shortlist of must-have characters. But after that, all other sorts of names started popping in and out from various news sources. Some were familiar, like Ironhide and Ratchet, while others were definitely head-scratchers like Blackout? Prior to the live-action movie, the name Blackout was not connected to any iconic or popular Transformer character. From what I know, the only actual existing Transformer named Blackout at that point was a tiny MicroMaster released in 1990. And not just a typical one, but a MicroMaster combiner, meaning that he partnered with another MicroMaster named Space Shot to combine into one tiny jet. That's how pretty insignificant Blackout was. He was a Transformer that turned into half a jet. Oh well, if it's any consolation, at least he was the front half. Anyway, my initial thought was that Blackout was just a stand-in name for some other more known Transformer. And as the months passed, more details came out about this mysterious character. First, it was established that he was a Decepticon and that he transformed into a military helicopter. Now at the same time, news also arose of another Decepticon that would be included called Devastator that transformed into a tank, which naturally led me and many fans to speculate that these two could actually be the Decepticons Vortex and Brawl, respectively, who were members of the military-themed subgroup called the Combaticons. Then news of another Decepticon named Scorponok came out. While the original Scorponok was known by fans as the gigantic Decepticon Headmaster base, This movie version was definitely different, as he was described to be much, much smaller, and a minion of Blackout. So with that, speculation switched that Blackout was now the working name for another more iconic Decepticon, Soundwave, who was known to have minions, his equally popular Cassaticons, Laserbeak, Buzzsaw, Rumble, who was blue, and Frenzy, who was red. Also, similar to Soundwave's character, Blackout was described as a Decepticon fiercely loyal to his leader and referred to as Megatron's Hound. The original G1 Soundwave transformed into a Walkman, which at this point in time was obsolete. So it made sense to the fans that any modern representation of Soundwave would naturally involve him having to transform into something else more practical. And the helicopter seemed as good a choice as any. It turned out that fans weren't that far off with their theories because at one point, Blackout was originally conceived as an early version of a movie Soundwave. In the end though, the producers decided to save Soundwave for a later movie and make Blackout into his own original character instead. As one of the few original characters conceived for the first live Transformers movie, Blackout stands out as one of the most memorable and significant for a couple of reasons. But before we get into those reasons, considering that you haven't blacked out on me and this story yet, I'm guessing you're into it. And if that's the case, I hope you can help me tell more stories by subscribing to my channel. And if you already have, thank you, and please spread the word. So getting back into the reasons, first and foremost, I could be mistaken, but Blackout's toy was the first toy from the movie line that was revealed on the internet. At the very least, it was the first one that I saw. Prior to that, fans had already seen a bunch of concept art for the new look of the movie Transformers, which for better or worse, was a major departure from the familiar boxy robot look that we were used to from the original toys, cartoons, and comics. So naturally, we were all curious, or concerned, about how this more organic and scrap metalish movie look would translate into toy form. I remember actually being quite impressed with how the Blackout toy looked. 
While definitely different from what we were used to, I thought that he looked cool, and more notably, quite menacing. But more importantly and significantly than being just the first toy revealed though, Blackout was the first Transformer to appear in the movie, and what a hell of a debut it was. In the opening minutes of the movie, we see a mysterious helicopter flying ominously towards a US military base. Even at a distance, he is immediately picked up on radar but doesn't acknowledge any attempts made by the base to identify itself. Undeterred and accompanied by US jets, the copter continues its way until it lands on the base. And at this point, surrounded by military on all sides, the tension on the screen is palpable. Of course, to the audience, we all know what's up. And almost instantly, we hear that familiar iconic transforming sound from the cartoon. And all hell breaks loose as Transformer fans all over the world go into a collective figurative orgasmic rapture and the helicopter transforms into the huge menacing Decepticon blackout and begins to lay waste to the military base and all the unfortunate soldiers. It's this iconic opening sequence that is forever etched in Transformer fans' minds as the first time they saw an actual Transformer in live action on the movie screen. Unfortunately, after this most memorable scene, Blackout is, well, out and is rarely seen throughout the rest of the movie and only returns for the final climactic battle where he is ultimately killed off by an unfortunate but well-placed shot to his crotch by one of the human lead characters. And that was it for Blackout. Or was it? In the next movie, 2009's Revenge of the Fallen, in what most likely was a case of budget saving by using already existing 3D models, despite having his crotch blown off in the prior movie, Blackout is seemingly alive and well back to slice up more Autobots with his deadly blades. It turned out though that this was another Decepticon named Grindor. Although it's widely speculated that given Grindor's more distressed and battle-damaged look, that he actually is a resurrected Blackout, since out of all the Decepticons killed off in the first movie, only Blackout and Megatron are shown being dumped into the Laurentian Abyss. Supposedly, some of the pieces of the dismantled Blackout being dumped by Navy crew members had a similar damage and rust pattern seen on Grindor. Anyway, it was in this abyss that Megatron is later revived using a piece of the Allspark, so it's not a stretch to think that his loyal Hound would receive the same treatment as well. Either way though, regardless if Grindor is truly a resurrected Blackout or not, the point is moot, since Grindor himself doesn't last very long on screen, as he is awarded a more believable and very graphic death at the hands, or should I say hooks, of Optimus Prime in a memorable and very savage forest fight. Anyway, despite his relatively short lifespan and inglorious end due to his unforgettable introduction, Blackout still has remained a favorite to many Transformer fans like myself. So much so that he has actually managed to live on in other Transformers media. While he was only briefly featured as a background character, a Decepticon named Blackout was created for the popular 2007 cartoon series Transformers Animated. Like the movie before it, this new series also featured a radically different look for our robots in disguise. I imagine Blackout was meant for a more prominent role later in the show, since an actual toy of this Blackout was made and released in Japan. While definitely inspired by the original movie design, it was quite interesting seeing Blackout reimagined in this more stylized animated look. Unfortunately, the series was prematurely cancelled before any plans for him could materialize. Finally, with the current movie franchise seemingly coming to an end, in 2018, Hasbro decided to double down and make the most of the Bayverse movie iteration of the Transformers with their studio series toy line. This new line featured more accurate toy renditions of characters from the live-action movie franchise, including a much-needed, upscaled version of Blackout. As nice as the original Blackout toy was, one major problem was that it was way out of scale with the other toys in the movie line. Despite being a Voyager toy, it was puny for what it was supposed to be. So for years, a larger leader-class Blackout was on the wish list of most Bayverse toy collectors. And finally, over 10 years after Blackout made his on-screen debut, Hasbro finally gave us what we wanted. Well, sort of. Unfortunately, while this version is a definite improvement from the original toy, as far as leader class size Transformers go, he was still small. Most likely due to modern day rising production costs, Hasbro made the decision to decrease the collective scale of the entire Studio Series line. So while these toys were infinitely better in terms of accuracy and engineering, they didn't fit in size-wise with any of the movie toys that came before them. So while this new leader-sized Blackout was in scale with the rest of the characters in the Studio Series line, he was still kinda tiny standing next to older movie Transformer toys. 
So basically, Hasbro was saying, thanks, but you'll need to restart your whole Bayverse collection again from scratch. Anyway, despite its smallest size though, I do think it's a pretty good and accurate plastic rendition of this original movie character. And it was almost good enough to convince me to sell off my older movie line Transformers and go all in with the new studio series instead. Almost. Ultimately though, I decided to not fall for Hasbro's plan to have me reboot my entire collection, at least in a way that they had hoped. Instead of going smaller, I went the other way and went bigger through the mostly knockoff Transformers route. Enter the third or fourth party company, Wei Jiang, who found their proverbial niche in the Transformers toy game by producing improved and more importantly, oversized versions of official Hasbro products. And one of their most notable and popular releases was Hide Shadow, a modified and upscaled version of Studio Series Blackout. Standing over 4 inches taller than the Studio Series Blackout, Hide Shadow is a beast. And with this increased size comes some added construction and retooling improvements such as increased detailing, die-cast parts, and more articulation. And the kicker being that he was sold at a very, very reasonable price, only slightly more than its Studio Series counterpart. It really was a no-brainer. And just like in the movie, this blackout turned out to be just the start of me upgrading my Bayverse collection to the larger masterpiece size. I don't know, with just so many details, these designs are better served on this larger scale. And with so many more reasonable value for money options from companies like Wei Jiang and later Black Mamba, it just made more sense to reboot my collection this way. Anyway, regardless of how you feel about the Bayverse as a whole, or just Blackout as a character, what we got in the movies was an infinite upgrade over that little obscure half-jet micromaster that shared the same name. And at the end of the day, it can't be denied that Blackout has the unique distinction and honor of being the very first official Transformer that we saw come to life on the big screen. And that alone makes him quite significant in the entirety of the franchise. So are there any other fans of the Decepticon Blackout out there? What are some of your other favorite original Bayverse characters? Let me know in the comments below and tell me your story. Hey, did you like that story? Why not check out this one about the Transformer that Blackout was originally supposed to be? Or any other Transformer story for that matter. Either way, thanks for watching and hope you come back for more. <laughs>